Resident Evil may be the king of survival horror, but Silent Hill was the best psychological horror franchise. With such a major focus on flawed main protagonists and monsters created out of the fears and nightmares of different characters, Silent Hill truly pushed the boundaries of that middle ground between psychological and survival horror. With that being said, not every game in the franchise captured the essence of Silent Hill. So on today's episode, I want to take a look at the 10 mainline Silent Hill games and rank them from worst to best. Before that though, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like the content I bring you guys. Especially if you love survival horror games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, as I do at least one survival horror related video once per week. Also, leave a like on today's video if you enjoyed today's topic. Anyway, my name is Ruben with Nerd Space Games and this is every Silent Hill game ranked from worst to best. Let's get it. Number 10, Silent Hill Ascension. It's sad to say that the newest entry of the Silent Hill franchise is already regarded as the worst game of the series. And maybe it's unfair to say that since the game isn't technically fully finished yet as it's still an ongoing game for another few months. With that being said, Ascension did just about everything wrong with the Silent Hill IP. First off, it's a mobile only game. While not as bad as those spin-off mobile Silent Hill games that we got back in the day, Ascension still comes off as lazy and a cash grab. The AI generated characters and their piss poor neutral reactions to every major event in the game looks worse than a B horror movie. Unfortunately, the negatives don't stop there. Jinvid and Konami attempt to ride off the coattails of supermassive games with a choose your own adventure mentality, but unfortunately they can't even do that right. Unlike those games that give you multiple endings depending on your decisions, which adds replayability, Silent Hill Ascension only has one canon route determined by the world. And to make matters worse, the voting power is determined by the amount of influence you put into each vote. And what does Konami and Genvid do to take advantage of this situation? They make players pay for more influence to help sway a specific vote. Fuck that political bullshit. This is easily the biggest cash grab using an established IP I've seen in a really long time. Even if we ignore the cash grab and the laziness of the game, the story is boring and continues to drag on and barely even feels like a Silent Hill game which actually is a problem a lot of the games have near the bottom of this list. Number 9, Silent Hill, The Book of Memories. The Book of Memories is another weird entry in the Silent Hill franchise as it is a dungeon crawler versus your typical Silent Hill game. The main protagonist is a player created character who finds themselves in possession of a book that tells the future of the main protagonist. Using this book, the main character attempts to change things to make their lives better. While the story is interesting enough, it doesn't really compare to the rest of the franchise. Plus, as a personal preference, I'm not a big fan of most dungeon crawlers to begin with, and even if I was, this one is definitely mediocre at best. I do see some fans that defend this title because of its unique story, the fact that the player creates their own character, and the gameplay can be addicting and fun at times, but none of this, at least in my personal opinion, is enough to help this game surpass other entries on this list. Well, outside of Ascension, of course. Number 8, Silent Hill Homecoming. Finally, we reach a Silent Hill game that at least somewhat resembles the franchise with its gameplay and story, but it definitely lacks in a lot of the departments compared to the rest of the series. First off, the main protagonist of the game is easily the worst of the franchise as he's unoriginal and a poor imitation of a different, better character in the franchise, James Sutherland. The gameplay isn't any better since it heads down the route of action versus horror. Silent Hill Homecoming introduces a dodge mechanic, but trying to nail down the timing of the dodging is brutal as it's unrefined and clunky at best. The worst part about Silent Hill Homecoming though is the fact that it ruins a lot of the lore of the game. First, it reintroduces Pyramid Head, a monster that is supposed to be unique to James Sutherland from Silent Hill 2. His inclusion in the game just showcases how little the new development team understood the Silent Hill games. What's even weirder is that he's barely even used in the game and appears maybe three times, all of which is just a brief cutscene. You don't even have to fight him at all in Homecoming, which kind of makes me wonder why did they even include him? The story is fairly predictable, and even though some of the locations are interesting and the bosses are some of the most disturbing creatures of the franchise, Silent Hill Homecoming still finds itself in the bottom half of the series. Number 7, Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Shattered Memories is basically a reimagining of the first game, sort of. To be completely honest, reimagining is an understatement as it completely ignores everything about Silent Hill and creates a completely different story with its own unique twist. While it follows Harry Mason still, the end of the game reveals that Harry had died in a car wreck 
and that everything we have played up until the end of the game has been a figment of Cheryl's imagination to help her deal with the death of her father. While I do like this twist, and honestly, it's one of the more interesting stories in the Silent Hill universe, I just wish they didn't have to use the Silent Hill IP with established characters of the franchise. The fact that they pretty much ruined the first game with this narrative is a big reason why I found myself disappointed with the game, despite the interesting story and twist. Plus, the gameplay is essentially non-existent. It basically takes out all of the survival and combat aspects of the game and replaces it with a glorified Maze Runner experience of some kind because of the betrayal of iconic characters of the first game, a story that would have been better used as a non-Silent Hill related game, and the lack of both survival and combat in the gameplay therefore taking away the survival horror traits of the franchise, Silent Hill Shattered Memories finds itself in the bottom half of the series. Number 6, Silent Hill Downpour. A lot of people look down on this game and for good reason. The game does suffer from a lot of problems, but there are enough shiny moments in this game that move it slightly higher than a few other entries in the franchise. First off, the gameplay is much better than games like Homecoming and Shattered Memories. Whereas Homecoming goes full on action style combat and Shattered Memories throws out the combat completely, Downpour at least feels more connected to the roots of Silent Hill in terms of the gameplay. Plus, Silent Hill Downpour does something better than most games of the franchise, the creation of a semi-open world experience that is worth exploring. With side quests and plenty of collectibles to motivate the player to explore, Silent Hill Downpour arguably has more hours for the players to enjoy than any other entry in the series. Unfortunately, these positives are nowhere near enough to elevate this game any higher on this list. Downpour has one of the worst portrayals from a main character in the series. The mystery around why he is locked up has us intrigued enough, but thanks to Murphy having the worst personality of the franchise, it's hard to like this character. Granted, this is kind of by design, as the character is supposed to remain as neutral as possible as the different endings in the game define the type of character Murphy is and was. The endings can turn Murphy into a homicidal maniac who murdered his own son, or a victim of being framed by a dirty cop. The problem with this concept is that it contradicts Murphy's personality, as the game needs to keep his character as neutral as possible until the very end to which we see a 180 shift in his character regardless of the ending that you go with. With an uninteresting and boring main character, the rest of the story falls short and therefore it's hard to enjoy playing through this game. Even the side characters of the game fall flat and none of them stand out at all. Hell, I would argue that most of the side characters in this game are even worse than some of the side characters in Homecoming. Plus, the gameplay is still rough and clunky compared to earlier entries in the series. Number 5, Silent Hill 4, The Room. Silent Hill 4 was the last of the Team Silent games, the smaller team within Konami that created Silent Hill. With that being said, I believe it is the worst out of the four games they made. Don't get me wrong, I love Silent Hill 4. I think it was a bold direction for the franchise as it became the first main game to not take place in the town of Silent Hill. With that being said, the other three games made by Team Silent were superior in more ways than one. Starting with the positives, Silent Hill 4 The Room primarily took place in Room 302 and the other worlds which were in different locations, and the story was easily one of the most interesting aspects of Silent Hill 4. The main villain of the game was the ghost of Walter Sullivan as he began murdering people in the other world in an effort to perform a ritual. Henry, the main character of the game, begins doing everything he can to save the victims before Walter gets to them. But other than the unique worlds, the story, and the main villain, everything else is subpar at best. The main character is one of the least interesting protagonists of the franchise. Silent Hill has always been known to explore flawed main characters that are dealing with their own trauma. Honestly, this is a big reason why Silent Hill is regarded as the best psychological horror franchise ever created. Unfortunately, Henry is just a regular guy. He's just a photographer that ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time. While that may have worked for most horror games and movies, it lacked a certain Silent Hill flair. Plus, the side characters weren't really that interesting either outside of Walter Sullivan, the main villain of the game. The combat is also not the greatest and in my opinion is a step down from Silent Hill 3. Still, it's better than most of the later entries in the series. Overall, Silent Hill 4 The Room seems like it deserves to be in the middle of the pack somewhere. It doesn't do anything outrageous that puts it low on the list, but it also doesn't do anything that helps it surpass the earlier entries and even a later entry that we'll talk about soon. Number 4, Silent Hill Origins. Silent Hill Origins follows Travis Grady, a truck driver on a delivery who decides to take a shortcut through Silent Hill. Big mistake, buddy. Grady is hands down one of the most underrated characters of the franchise. His backstory with his mother trying to murder him and his father killing himself in a hotel room, with Travis being the one to find the body, he easily has one of the most tragic childhoods out of the rest of the main characters of the Silent Hill games. 
The side characters of this game are all returning characters since the story is a prequel to Silent Hill 1, which means characters like Lisa and Alessa make their return to Silent Hill. The locations are some of the most interesting ones too, and are extremely iconic despite the game still taking place in the town of Silent Hill. While you do revisit Akamela Hospital, Origins introduces new locations like a theater and even the motel where Grady's father killed himself at. The combat is even fun and exciting to use and even arguably better than most games of the franchise. The only complaint I have about the combat is the amount of melee weapons. Travis can literally pick up toasters or IV stands and use them as weapons. This wouldn't seem so bad considering the weapons break, but the problem is that they easily stun block the enemies, making melee weapons extremely overpowered. And since the game gives you plenty of them to pick up throughout Silent Hill, you'll find yourself never using bullets except on the boss fights of the game, which basically takes away the limited resources feeling that you should have in survival horror games. Plus, there are complaints with the lore breaking elements of Alessa's story, and while I enjoyed it, Travis having control of bouncing back and forth between realities ruins the feeling of fear we used to get every time we saw the world switch to that nightmare reality. Also, outside of Grady's past, nothing is really exciting about the story here. Since we kind of already knew how things would eventually play out since it was a prequel, nothing really surprised us as players and kept us interested in the main plot of the game outside of Grady's backstory. Number 3, Silent Hill. And now we arrive at the start of it all, the original Silent Hill. While the game definitely didn't age as well as some of the other entries in this series, Silent Hill is the game that began it all and it was because of the success of this first game that Konami decided to keep cranking out these titles. Let's start with the positives. Harry Mason is easily one of the most relatable characters in the franchise. A simple dad who's looking to do whatever it takes to rescue his daughter. However, Harry's determination and unwavering love for his daughter is extremely admirable and it's a big part of why we fall in love with this character. Plus, Silent Hill 1 introduced some of the best side characters. From Lisa Garland, a nurse who was manipulated to do dark things and is actually something similar to a ghost, to Sybil, a cop who's risking her life to help Harry rescue his daughter. But the most iconic character from the game is of course, Alessa. The nightmare creatures in the dark world in Silent Hill are all manifestations of Alessa's fears. For example, we see a lot of giant insects because of Alessa's fear of bugs and monster dogs that come from Alessa's encounter with a dog that attacked her when she was younger. Dahlia and the cult are easily the main antagonists of the series, with them having some sort of involvement in most Silent Hill games. The locations are some of the most memorable locations in survival horror games. Like Midwich Elementary, a school full of shadow demon children trying to kill you or even Alcamillo Hospital, a location so iconic that we see it again and again in the series. While the gameplay is definitely clunky, the visuals are borderline unplayable in some sections without mods, and the story can get a little out there, Silent Hill is easily one of the best survival horror games out there that definitely deserves a remake, again as we don't really count Shattered Memories. Number 2, Silent Hill 3. Silent Hill 3 is the second best Silent Hill game and honestly it's probably the one with the best gameplay. Even though this is the third entry, Silent Hill 3 is actually a follow up of the first game whereas the second game has its own standalone story. Silent Hill 3 follows Heather Mason, the baby saved by Harry Mason in the first game. Essentially Heather is both Cheryl and Alyssa reborn, again. Now that she's 17, the cult has located her with the help of a private investigator. The first half of the game is spent with Heather trying to get back to her father while battling the cult and different kinds of monsters. As I said earlier, Silent Hill 3 in my opinion is the best in the series when it comes to the gameplay. The combat flows much better than it ever did in the previous entries and honestly starting with Silent Hill 4, the combat kind of goes downhill from here. The puzzles in the game are also some of the most challenging with some even requiring some knowledge on random things like Shakespeare. As for the story, it's fairly simple compared to some of the other entries. The first half of the story follows Heather as she returns back to her apartment while the second half of the game is a story of revenge. And even though Heather is definitely the most badass main character of the franchise, the rest of the cast of Silent Hill 3 kinda falls flat, which is a big reason why it fails to claim the number one spot. Still, Silent Hill 3 has just about everything you're looking for in a survival horror game. Interesting main character, limited resources, tough puzzles, creative yet terrifying monster designs, and plenty of weapons to help you kill the nightmares created by Alessa. Number 1, Silent Hill 2. The indisputable best Silent Hill game is of course, Silent Hill 2. There's a reason that Konami decided to take a chance at remaking Silent Hill 2 before a true remake of Silent Hill 1. It's because it's regarded as the best in the series. Hell, it's regarded as one of the best psychological horror games of all time. And for good reason. Starting with the main character, James Sutherland, you have one of the most flawed and conflicted characters in video games. 
The story Silent Hill 2 slowly builds up your love and appreciation for James only to then rip that all away with a sudden reveal at the end of the game. But while James may play a big part as to why Silent Hill 2 is the best in the franchise, there are so many other reasons that make this game a masterpiece. The side characters are easily some of the most interesting characters of the franchise. Similar to James, they each have their own trauma that they are facing and each one has a mystery that keeps the players intrigued. From Maria, a woman who looks just like the dead wife of James, to Eddie, a man bullied so much that it pushed him towards murder. Silent Hill 2 is a true psychological horror game that puts you into the deepest and darkest parts of humanity. With the story aside, Silent Hill 2 is a huge improvement to gameplay compared to its predecessor. While it doesn't come close to Silent Hill 3's gameplay, Silent Hill 2 at least feels comfortable for any fans of classic survival horror mechanics. The locations in Silent Hill 2 are hands down some of the best in the series, with areas like an underground prison to the mental hospital of Brookhaven. Honestly, if I was ranking games based on locations in each game, then there's a strong case that Silent Hill 2 will claim the number one spot there too. So um, let's recap. Silent Hill 2 has the best main character, the best story, the best locations, the best side characters, and even the most iconic and recognizable villain in the series, Pyramid Head. With all of these elements combined, Silent Hill 2 easily claims the title of best game in the Silent Hill franchise. So that does it for this episode of Nerd Space Games. Hit up the comments and let me know what you think of my number one pick. Is Silent Hill 2 the best in the series or is there another one that you think deserves that title? Let me know down below. Oh, and I know technically there's two more entries that I didn't include on this list, PT and Short Message. Since PT was a playable trailer for a canceled project, I decided not to include it on this list. As for Short Message, the game was announced and released after I finished this video and I had to edit this part into the ending of this topic. So stay tuned for my quick review of Silent Hill Short Message at a later time and my thoughts on where it would rank on this list once I finished the game. Anyway, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on today's video. But thanks for watching, and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Nerd Space Games. Take care.